Hey everyone, it's RCJ officially and welcome back to Find a Book and Read. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be reviewing the book Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a book that I picked up as one of my Hispanic Latina Heritage Month's book. It was highly recommended by the Barnes & Noble bookstore that I shop at in Glendora. I really wanted to pick this book up, but the problem is that I love reading hardcover books, so that Barnes & Noble, they only had it in paperback. So I decided to order the book on Amazon, and so as soon as it came in, I was super excited, but I was in the middle of finishing some other books. It just wasn't the time to get around to reading it. And I finally got started on it, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, a couple of things kind of interjected with the slower read for me. First of all is that I had a couple of things going on toward the end of the month of September and early October, and so my reading was kind of a little bit slow, and I wasn't getting into the book as much either. Both of those things kind of made the read a little bit longer than it probably should have, and I was surprised that I wasn't reading and as excited as I was with some of the other books that I've already read. However, with that being said, let me go ahead and just dive into this part of the review where I'm going to explain to you guys a little bit what this book is basically kind of about. Spoiler alert, I may give some of the plots away, but you've been warned, and it's also should be in the title of the video. So, Gods of Chain and Shadow follows our main character, Cassiopeia Tun, who is an 18-year-old young woman who lives with her mother at her grandfather's house. So this is her mom's dad, and her grandfather's name is Cirilo. And so Cirilo is not the kind of caring and loving grandfather that you would hope that she had, unfortunately. She lives there because her father tragically died. Her mother could not sustain both Casupa and her, and so she had to eventually succumb to living with her father talking about Kazubea's mom. And so they go to live with them, but like I said, the grandfather is not the kindest of men, but he gives them a home, obviously, and they basically treat Kazubea like Cinderella kind of a little bit. We get a story where not only is it sad to see how miserable Kazubea is, but she lives in a household where she isn't loved by her grandfather. Her mother isn't able to defend her as much because she wants to explain to Cassiopeia how much she should be grateful that her grandfather has graciously housed them. And she also kind of lives with a really uncomfortable, uncomfortable family. The aunts and cousins that live there are the worst and the cousin that we see the most is her cousin Martin. Martin is a total prick. I hate this dude so much. He treats her so badly, basically like total abuse, not the nicest dude. Her family usually goes to this trip at a cenote, which is kind of like, let's just kind of say a lake kind of a thing. In this particular instance, because Martin got Casiopea in trouble, grandfather said, well, you're not going to this trip. There is this key and chest in this story that basically begins this entire drive for what will become the story. This key, kind of like how I'm having this necklace around myself right now, is around her grandfather's neck most of the time, except because they left on this trip, grandfather left the key behind. So Casupea goes in to clean grandfather's room and sees that the key is there. She's curious about the chest, what's in there, because they've never been able to open it and it's always been locked. So she did what any curious person would do, Got the key, opened the chest, and she sees some bones. You'd think that she'd be a little bit more concerned with the fact that why does my grandfather have bones inside of this chest? Kind of weird. But nope, she instead goes, well, I wonder if there's treasure buried underneath all these bones inside the chest. So she digs through the bones, sticks a shard of bone in her left thumb, and a god appears all of a sudden forming from these bones. She's standing in front of this naked god and she's like like all scandalized, like, oh my gosh, I'm in front of a naked man and things like that. So it's kind of funny, I thought. And so this Mayan god, his name is Hunkamen, tells Kasupea, thank you for waking me up. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to stick with me because I'm missing my eye, I'm missing 
a finger or something like that and she and he's also missing an ear so he tells her you're going to have to help me find the rest of me so that I can be whole again and that way you can go back to living your life and I'll go back to living my life that I had before I was trapped in this box and so the way that he got trapped in that box was by his brother Vukupkame. Vukupkame wanted to be the ruling being of Shibalba which is the underworld and so Hunkame is the rightful god of death, but of course the brother being spiteful and wanting to have what his brother had off his brother and so took over the underworld and now Hunkame is going to recover the rest of his body so that he can go and recover his rightful place as the ruler of Shibaba. And so they go off on this quest. Kasupe is slightly excited by everything because she's always been so secluded she's never been able to leave anywhere because the family always keeps her super busy with chores at the house and only send her out to do errands around the town so they travel around mexico looking for the rest of Funkame's body and all the time they are then finally chased by Vukupkame indirectly so Vukupkame realizes that Hunkame has been awakened, so to say, goes and finds Cirilo, which is Casupea's grandfather. Casupea's grandfather gets like, oh my gosh, I didn't think that this would ever happen. I can't believe that my granddaughter did this and I hate this stupid girl. Things, those are the, some of the words, like, they're really harsh to Casupea. So Vukupkame is obviously like, well, you need to go and get your granddaughter, bring her back so that Hunkame does not get the rest of his body parts. So Cirilo's like, well, I'm really old and brittle now, but I have a grandson. And so this is where Martin comes back into the story and Martin is then sent to retrieve Casupea and Hunkame. Throughout the story, we kind of see how Hunkame is recovering his body parts are scattered throughout Mexico in different places with different uh, demons or guards that Bukukame has entrusted these uh, items to. The end of the story is finally where we get a lot of action. During the middle part, we meet a funny character, I suppose, a comic relief, I'm gonna say. His name is Lore, this demon that like loves the French lifestyle and lives on Earth, but he's confined to this one city because of his state of being. This entire story, like I said, is really good, but I think that the middle part was kind of prolonged a little bit and it was kind of slowly paced. Like I said, not a ton of action. The way that some of the body parts were recovered was very not simple but it could have been maybe a little bit more action filled maybe i don't know maybe that's kind of like what i was hoping for especially if we're talking about like a mayan god and this whole journey through mexico and kind of felt like it was going to be really really epic it wasn't the case unfortunately until like i said toward the end like the last hundred pages or so of the book that's where it really got interesting there were the zavala brothers who were the final step i suppose in this quest that kasupea and hunkame had gone on and of course throughout this entire journey kasupea kind of has had a whole thing for hunkame but because her family is like hardcore catholic she's kind of had these feelings of like well i'm not sure if i should like you i don't know that i should have these feelings for you i don't even know that i should believe that you're a god because you know Toward the end, there is a resolution of a conflict between Martin and Casiopea. Again, she's never had the greatest relationship with her family, but she's kind of always noticed and it's kind of hinted and told throughout the book that Martin and Casiopea maybe kind of had felt like they were going to get along, but then Grandpa says to Casiopea, I wish she'd been a boy. And Martin kind of hears that and gets upset. From there, that whole rivalry anger grew within Martin against Casiopea. So toward the end of the book, we finally see some kind of resolution from that she's kind of like realized wow well Vukukame and Hunkame kind of had this like quarrel for like really no reason other than for like wanting to be better than the other for no real reason and so she realizes this and she kind of not really makes amends with Martin but forgives him in a sense of like well you know you've kind of allowed me to survive because they have to go through this trial at the end of the book that is going to give Hunkame back his kingdom because Cassiopeia of course wins and that's kind of obviously the direction that this book was going to end in. We finally get that ending where Hunkame gets the rest of his body, Hunkame and Vukukame make up, they end up 
being just fine. Martin and Casabea are like just okay. Neither of them want to go back to their hometown. So Martin goes his way. Casabea says, good luck to you. And kind of insinuated that they kind of never see each other again. Juncame and Casabea unfortunately cannot be together because Juncame is going to forget everything that happened basically throughout their journey. Casabea can't stay in Chibalba because she's not dead. So we get this really interesting story from all of this, but like I said, it was kind of really slow throughout the middle. The ending was where there was more action, finally a little bit more faster paced. I didn't find myself picking up the book as often as I would have liked to. I did have opportunities where I could have read and instead of reading I just kind of like go well let me watch something on YouTube let me watch some movie some show that may be streaming I just didn't really want to pick this up a lot and it wasn't until I got to those last hundred pages that I was like oh okay I really want to like finish this and, and go through at the end of the story like I said it kind of works out for everybody you know they're all happy with each other Junka Me and Casapea reveal their, their love for each other. Unfortunately, even though they can't stay together, there are some kind of nice tie-ins at the end of the story to see that, well, Hunkame really did love her and Casabea is going to live out the rest of her life doing who knows what. I don't know that there's necessarily going to be a sequel to this book, but it was a very good book nonetheless. So I give this book a four star rating. Like I said, I thought that the story was going to be much more exciting, but I enjoyed the book overall. I think mainly because also it's written by a Hispanic Latinx author that actually encompassed a lot of the culture and really brought together the Mayan mythology into this book. And I thought she did a really great job of it. So pick it up if you've never read this book, I do recommend it. And if you enjoy it, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you thought of it. Let me know if you gave it a five star rating, you think it was a four star rating like I gave it, or if you gave a lower star rating i'm curious to know but thank you very much guys for watching i hope you guys enjoy this book review and as always find a book and read bye